Hey what's up guys it's Kelly and today I'm sharing my January wrap up and February TBR and I'm fully aware that by the time you watch this we will be almost halfway through February. We're just gonna ignore that little fact and get into the wrap up. My first read of the year was The Management Style of the Supreme Beings by Tom Holt which I really enjoyed. I gave it three out of five stars because I just I did feel like there was something a bit lacking in the writing but storyline wise I did really enjoy it. It was very funny basically God and Jesus decide that they're sick of being supreme so they sell Earth to the Venturi brothers who are these brothers that started with nothing on Mars and have slowly sort of taken over the universe by buying up planets. And the first thing that the Venturi brothers decide to do is do away with this outdated system of good and evil and replace it with a system where every time you sin you have to pay a massive fine. Which is great in a way because crime is pretty much non-existent because only like the top 1% of the world can actually afford to sin, but it also in its own way seems a little bit evil. Hell is basically Disneyland and Santa Claus makes an appearance, so all in all it's a pretty great time. Trigger warning though, if you are easily offended by people talking about religion or making fun of religion, don't read this, You're just it's just gonna upset you. I am religious and really enjoyed it still. I found it very funny because I looked at it for what it is. It's a work of fiction, it's a satire, it's supposed to be silly. Like, you're not supposed to take any of this seriously. If you can step away from it and take everything in this book with a pinch of salt, then you'll be fine. But if you are very sensitive towards people mocking your religion, if you are Christian, then just, just stay away. Then, guys, I finally finished it! It only took me four months, but I finished it. I think I gave it four out of five stars. Yes, I did. I gave it four out of five stars. That may sound strange because it took me four months to finish, but the thing is, while I was reading it, I really enjoyed it. It was really good. I just couldn't read a lot of it at a time because I found it a bit dense. All around, great time. Really good book. I'm not going to review it. I already did a review of the movie and that took like half an hour to film and like an hour and a half to edit and there's even more to talk about in the book than there was in the film and I just I don't have the energy to be completely honest. <laughs> I think by now you all know what this is about. If you don't then you're welcome to go and watch my film review where I kind of give a bit of a summary I think. I don't even know. I'm so bad at doing reviews guys. Otherwise if you want a review of it Julia Sapphire did a really good review the book. Then I read two graphic novels this month. I read Survival Geeks by Neil Googe, which was great. I, I gave it three out of five stars because some of the comics, because it's a bind up of like five or six comics, and some of them were amazing. They were five out of five stars, but others just kind of dragged a bit and I was like, eh, and they got like a two out of five. So it averaged out to about three, three and a half out of five for me. And it's basically this group of, I guess, like college age students who one of them turns their house into like this ship that can travel through time and space. So they go on all these amazing adventures and there's all these great references to pop culture. Like there are baby Cthulhu's and great t-shirts and just awesome references to things. Like if you are a fan of anything, any geek culture, you will really enjoy this because it's just so great. It talks about role playing, it talks about video games, it talks about Star Wars, it talks about steampunk and makes fun of steampunk. <laughs> just all in all, the art is amazing, it's very funny and a really brilliant concept. Then I read Unicorns vs Goblins by Dana Simpson. This is book three in the Heavenly Nostrils series, which is also known as the Phoebe and her Unicorn series. This was amazing. I read this because I was at work one day we were supposed to be setting up for the sale and they hadn't dropped off our sale stuff yet so I was sitting there for like four hours with nothing to do and we would got that book in that day so it was just sitting on the trolley like waiting to go outside to be shelved so I just sat down and read, read it then and it is amazing! I love anything unicorn related and this is just so great. Like I as an adult loved it but it is aimed at sort of six to nine ten year olds so if you have a child in your life that you need to get a gift for, get them the Phoebe and the Unicorn books. They'll probably be shelved with the books, not graphic novels. They're just so great, so funny, so wonderful. I read Darker by E.L. James, which I think needs no... This doesn't really need any sort of 
not justification, any introduction from me. I enjoyed it. I do think her writing has improved slightly. I'm still debating whether or not I actually want to review this. I have made sub quite substantial notes, so let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a review of it. Yeah, I do think that her writing has improved slightly, so that's something. And I gave it three stars, not because it was three stars worth of good, but because it was three stars worth of enjoyable. Yeah. I mean, there's not really much to say about this. Okay, I need to start, like, wrapping up my wrap-up because I still have to go through my entire TBR file. And I read Otherworld by Jason Siegel and Kirsten Miller. This was the group read for the Winter Biennial Bibliothon that, in theory, I took part in, but this is actually the only thing I read, which is why I haven't done a wrap-up for that, even though I did a TBR for it. So consider this my wrap-up. This, I think, I also gave three out of five stars. It was good. Again, I really enjoyed the storyline. I'm keen to see where they take the world, where they take the story. But again, just something in the writing was lacking. I don't know if it was the main character who was narrating it. I just... I didn't really click with him. Like, he was fine. He was a fine character. I think that if he was a secondary character and the book was told either from third-person perspective or from another character's perspective, then I might have enjoyed it a bit more. Like, I had no problem with him being the main character. I just didn't really like his narrative voice. So I think that was that was something that brought it down for me. But yeah, this has been very heavily hyped and I see why. It was very enjoyable and I'm, I'm keen to see where they take this story. It's a cool concept and something that I think we are scarily close to because it's all about sort of virtual reality gaming and the, the advances in technology that have been made with virtual reality and how they could shape the future of the world and using virtual reality to try and help people who are paralyzed and comatose, all these things that in theory sound really good but when you start thinking about them too much start getting really really scary. On to my TBR. I have already finished some of these because I am at the time of filming this already a week into February. Whoops. I'm not going to tell you what I've already read though because that's going to ruin my wrap up so we're just going to go through as if I haven't read any of this. I did mention I think in a video a while ago or I might have just said it on Instagram that February is going to be a reread month for me so I'm going to reread some of my old favorite books and some books that I want to carry on with the series but I don't really remember what happened in the first book and not feel any guilt about it whatsoever. So that is what I have been doing and I am greatly enjoying it. I like revisiting books. And also there are other reasons that this has been a good idea but I will mention those with the specific books. I am rereading Cinder by Marissa Meyer. This is the first book in the Lunar Chronicles series and I read it about two years ago. And it was fine at the time. I was like, it's average, it's fine. It didn't really push me to continue with the rest of the series, even though I had the next book in the series already. It was just fine. But, but, rereading it now, I'm enjoying it a lot more the second time round. So I definitely think that in sort of March, April, I will be carrying on with the rest of the series. Same thing with The Raven Boys by Maggie Stiefvater. As you can see, I'm actually almost, like, I have like 30 pages left. I'm so close to the end of this book. I also read this, and actually, this I did really enjoy. I enjoyed this more than I enjoyed Cinder, but I read them about the same time. And after I finished reading this, I was like, oh my goodness, best book ever. Have to read the next one. And then I went to the bookstore, and they didn't have it, and I didn't want to get them to order it for me, so... I just kind of never read The Dream Thieves. And then the other day, someone came into the bookstore that I work in, which incidentally was the same one I went to a few years ago to ask about this book. And she asked if we had The Dream Thieves, and we didn't. So I ordered a copy for her, and at the same time, ordered a copy for myself. And when I started reading that, I was like, I have to read The Raven Boys again. I don't remember anything that happened, which is the same problem I had with Cinder. Now that I've wanted to pick up Scarlet, I was like, I don't actually remember what happened in the book. So rereading Cinder, rereading The Raven Boys, enjoying them both a lot more this time round, even though The Raven Boys I did really enjoy the first time round. I'm enjoying it even, even more this time. It's just so good. I'm finally, I'm getting the hype, guys. I keep seeing these all over Bookstagram, and now I'm like, I get it. I have so many feelings about this book. Then I'm also rereading The Princess Diaries because these are like a little safety blanket for me and also they are so short. I can read these books in like two hours. I don't need to justify myself to you guys. Just, I love The Princess Diaries. I am still considering if I have enough time, which I don't think I will, I am considering rereading Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone because I have the illustrated edition that I need to read. I just got the Ravenclaw House edition, which I'd like to read, even though I know that the text is exactly the same and it's really just 
the Ravenclaw stuffs at the front, but I want to have the experience of holding that book in my hand and reading it. I don't think I'll have time for those, but maybe. Next up is a book that will be familiar to you, because it was on my January TBR, and if I did a TBR in December it was probably on there as well. And that is The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan, the first book in the Wheel of Time series. I am getting there, slightly, kind of, yeah. I am enjoying it, it's not that I'm not enjoying it, I just, I need to be in the right mood for it. And that's why I read so many books at once, because I need a book for whatever mood I'm in, because I'm very much a mood reader. And I'm the same with series, like that's why I watch six or seven different series at a time, because no matter what mood I'm in, there's like a different series that I feel like watching. I just haven't been in the mood for high fantasy, I've been in the mood for YA fantasy, I've been in the mood for like chilled stuff, and I also haven't had a lot of time on my hands, and to read this kind of chunky book I need to have time and I need to have like a calming environment where I can just focus on the book and nothing but the book. And I do most of my reading at work because I've been working so much lately. But tonight is my last shift and then I'm off until next week Tuesday in theory. So hopefully I'll get some reading done this weekend. I need to know that I have like six hours ahead of me of nothingness. And then I can focus on giving this book like an hour, an hour or two of my time. It's just knowing that I have the time to give it and like that I can just sit and read with some candles and some tea and no distractions. Then I can read. Then I can get through like 100, 200 pages at a time. But if I know I only have a short amount of time or if I have distractions, I just can't read it. So I'm really going to push to get some more done this weekend while I'm off work. And lastly, Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. I don't remember if I mentioned this in my January TBR, but I did start reading this in January. I am enjoying it. I really like Neil Gaiman, but this just kind of fell to the wayside when I started picking up some of the other books that I'm reading. But yeah, I am enjoying it so far. It's urban fantasy. It's set in like a dark, gritty London. It's Neil Gaiman, whom I love and adore, and I'm really enjoying revisiting his writing because I really enjoy his writing style and there's something very nostalgic and safe about it for me because I got very into Neil Gaiman when I was like 15, 16. So reading his books just kind of takes me back to that time in my life and the person that I was back then and the hobbies that I had back then. And In a lot of ways I miss the person that I was in high school. In a lot of ways I don't, but in some ways I do and this kind of takes me back to that moment in time very nicely. Whew. Okay, I feel like I've been talking for hours, so I'm gonna wrap things up there. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Leave me links to your January wrap-ups, February TBRs, I'd love to go watch them. Also let me know if you have any thoughts on the books that I've mentioned, either that I have read or that I'm planning to read, and I will see you all again very very soon. Bye!